3.4, the second derivative. Again, not, not how to find it. You know how to find it. Just take another derivative. Just take a derivative twice. But what it tells us is concavity. <coughs> so concave up, concave down. Uh, it's similar to concave and convex from physics, if you remember that. It's related to that. If f is differentiable, differentiable, usually we just abbreviate that so I don't have to spell it. If f is differentiable on a to b, Remember, differentiability is almost always on an open interval because you can't really take a derivative at an endpoint because you can't limit from either side. Then the graph of f is, okay, here's the big word of the day, concave up, on A to B, if F prime, if the derivative, the slope, is increasing. So things are concave up if f prime is increasing. Okay, not f is increasing. f is increasing just means the thing is going up. f prime is increasing means the slope of the line is getting bigger. So if it starts out flat and then starts going like that, that's concave up. probably guess what the next line is going to be is concave down on A to B if F prime is decreasing. So let's say we start with a flat slope and if we decrease from that the slope would need to be negative. So down, but then more negative and more negative and more negative. Now, we don't just have to look at that side. We could also have a slope that's decreasing if if it started out um, positive, but then got less and less positive. So this is still a decreasing slope. It starts out really high, and then it's you know here the slope is 10, and here it's 8. And here it's 2, and here it's 1, and here it's 0. Something like that. Same thing on the other side. Uh, f could be, f prime could be increasing if it starts out really negative and then becomes less and less negative. That's still an increasing slope. So concave down if f prime is decreasing. And if we want to talk about f prime increasing or decreasing, then we need the derivative of f prime. Because the derivative tells us if something's increasing or decreasing. So the derivative of f tells us if f is increasing or decreasing. The derivative of f prime tells us if f prime is increasing or decreasing. That's where the second derivative comes from. Let's draw another picture here, maybe. Something kind of looks cubic.
What's F prime doing uh, in, in the red section here? Is it increasing or decreasing? F prime, not F. F is increasing over here, but what's F prime doing? The slope is decreasing. The slopes are decreasing. So F prime is decreasing. Therefore, it's concave down. Um, you can you can think of it as it's bold down is how some people describe it. And that means that the second derivative is negative. The derivative of the derivative is negative, so the first derivative is decreasing. Well, somewhere in here, it switches from decreasing to increasing it. F prime switches from decreasing to increasing. If F prime is increasing, it's concave up. If it helps to think of it as a bowl, it's bold up. The, the bowl is up as opposed to the bowl being down. And that means the second derivative is positive. That point has a name, but we'll talk about that name later. Let's do an example here before we get too much further. Let's determine the concavity intervals so that's kind of like the increasing and decreasing intervals except concavity means second derivative so it's kind of the same process we did in that warm-up but we're going to do it with the second derivative of f of x equals negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2 All right, concavity always means second derivative, so let's take a second derivative. There's no shortcuts to the second derivative, you just have to go in order here. So negative 3x squared plus 6x is the first derivative. That doesn't really help me for this problem. Second derivative, negative 6x plus 6. And we're going to do the same thing we did for the warm-up. Um, set it equal to zero. Find the zeros and the uh, indeterminate or the undefined points. Put them on a number line. <coughs> All the same stuff. So same process we just did, except with a second derivative. So negative 6x equals zero. x equals 1. That's my... It doesn't have a name. It's if it was if we were doing first derivatives, we'd call it a critical point. But there is no um, matching term for second derivative. So it's a it's a point of interest. It's the point we're going to put on the number line. But it doesn't have a, a technical name. So I will check my intervals and I'm going to check into the second derivative because I'm thinking about concavity so if I check the second derivative at 0 I get a positive number that means f is concave up It's a little tricky to, to do the little sketch part of the graph because you don't know if it's if it's concave up like, like that. That's concave up. Or if it's concave up like that. Or if it's or if it's all of the above. So it's a little tricky to put a, a sketch on there, but we do know that F is concave up. 
at 2. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative. That means f is concave down. And same thing, it's, I'm a little hesitant to draw anything because um, you could have concave down like that, but you could also have concave down like that. So a little, a little tricky to draw a picture without having more information. But we do know that f is concave up on, so let's write the intervals here, concave up from negative infinity to 1. concave down from 1 to infinity. Again, by itself, that's not super helpful. But when we combine it with what we know from first derivatives, increasing, decreasing, we combine it with some other stuff, uh, it'll be helpful, more helpful than it is by itself. So, so far, the process is for the first derivative. Take the second derivative, set it equal to zero, set up a number line. Like all the steps are the same, except you took two derivatives at the beginning instead of just one. And two derivatives tells you concavity rather than increasing, decreasing. So it's kind of nice that the process is the same. It's just first derivative tells you increasing, decreasing. Second derivative tells you concave up, concave down. So there's not a whole lot of new process to learn today. It's just, what does the second derivative tell you? It's more concept than process. Points of inflection. Which can be abbreviated POI, including on the AP test. If you say POI, they'll know what you mean. If you really want to be lazy and just pronounce it poi, you can do that as well. POI. Um, on the test, you usually only use the, the abbreviation POI or poi if it asks for points of inflection. So in the context of a problem, it'll be clear. Um, if you say POI, it's because you're answering where are the points of inflection. So it's perfectly OK to use that abbreviation. Right, the point C comma F of C is a point of inflection of F if two things are true. First thing, the second derivative at C equals 0, or the second derivative at C is undefined. Right, that, sounds, that should sound familiar, right? We've done that with first derivative. If the first derivative is 0 undefined, it's called the critical point. The second derivative is zero undefined. It's not called anything unless the second thing is true. F double prime changes signs. Meaning you've got a change of concavity. So real similar to what we did with first derivative stuff. If the first derivative is 0 undefined, it's called a critical point. The second derivative doesn't have a name. If f prime, this is 2 primes, but if, if the first derivative changes signs, then you've got a max or a min. Here we don't specify if it's a point of inflection change in positive to negative or negative to positive. It's just a point of inflection. So there's not this exact parallel between first derivative stuff and second derivative stuff, which I think is what kind of throws people off sometimes. So we'll say kind of like uh, the max and min 
stuff, except max and min is first derivative. Second derivative test. Don't know whether to say this at the beginning or at the end. Because this is a little bit confusing. But the second derivative test will help us identify maxes or mins. Which is a little bit weird because second derivative is supposed to be telling us concavity, bold up, bold down. First derivative is what tells us increasing, decreasing. So we got to figure out, well, how can I use bold up, bold down to tell me if it's a max or a min? Let f be a function. Such that f prime of c equals 0. Okay, so that's sort of first derivative stuff there. First derivative is 0. That's a horizontal tangent line. All right, pictures of where that might be. So if f prime equals 0, horizontal tangent line, possible max, possible min. And the second derivative of f exists on a to b containing c, oops, containing c. You don't usually need all that extra information there. If the second derivative exists, Then we got two options here. If the second derivative at C is greater than zero, so think about what that would mean if the function has <coughs> if the function is has a horizontal tangent line, and the second derivative is greater than 0, meaning concave up, then f of c is a So is that case A or case B? If we have a horizontal tangent line, that's A and B, and it's concave up, which one of those is concave up? B. So what's going on at that point? It's a, uh, what'd you say? What was that? Possible. It's more than a possible minimum, it is a minimum. Then it is a relative minimum. That would be case case B there. If we're drawing the, the picture. The other case would be if the second derivative is less than zero, meaning we're concave down. Then f of c is a. Again, think about what that means. If it's a horizontal tangent line, but it's bowled down, then you're at the top of a hill, so you're at a relative maximum. That's sort of our case A that we drew up there.
if, I guess there is a third case, if the second derivative is equal to zero, then you can't really say anything. So it's not really much of a conclusion. Then try first derivative test. Because if it's if it doesn't have concavity there, you don't really know exactly what that means, what that looks like. Because it's not bold up or bold down. Do something else. That's not really going to be our case most of the time. We're going to have, we're going to know if it's bold up, in which case there's a minimum. If it's bold down, that means there's a maximum. This is another one of those things where you don't memorize. Because you get all the all the pluses and minuses and all that's kind of backwards or confused. Don't don't memorize that. Think about it. There's a horizontal tangent line, but it's concave down. It has to be a max. Horizontal tangent line and concave up. It's got to be a min. So don't memorize that stuff. Think about what it is. Draw little pictures if you need to, and then you can figure out if it's a max or a min, or if you don't have the right information. Let's find the relative extrema of f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. using the second derivative test. So using what we just learned. So not using number line with increasing, decreasing intervals. That would work. But using the second derivative test, that means thinking about concavity. And just to force you into the second derivative, find all points of inflection. So related questions, relative extrema. So let's do first derivative, so 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. We'll set that equal to 0. Factor out a 6. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 are my critical points. You know what? Let's pause this problem. Think back to our, our little uh, flow chart of things that we do. It's going to have three arrows now. Critical points tell us possible extrema. And then we got three options here, or three options now. We can do a table. That tells us the absolute extrema. We've done that. That's just That was number one on that quiz, or number two. No, it was number one. Take your critical points. Put them all on a table with an endpoint, and whoever's highest is max, whoever's lowest is min. No big deal. Then we did, um, what do we want to call this? Let's say f prime intervals. That was the first derivative test. That tells us relative extrema. What this problem is, is going to tell us the relative extrema, but um, using the second derivative test. Let's 
see if this makes sense. Find the second derivative of the critical points because the critical points are where it's zero. If it's concave up, then it's a minimum. If it's concave down, it's a maximum. So that kind of ties it all together. Um, but this is the route we're going to take for this problem. So we've got our critical points. So our possible extrema, we know. Let's do a second derivative. So let's see, that would be 12x minus 6. And now I want to test those two points into 12x minus 6. And again, all, this is another one of those where all I really care about is positive and negative. So if you get a little lazy, you'd still be okay. So if I plug in 2, I get positive. That means f of 2 is concave up. And f prime of 2 is 0. So I need something, I need a point that has a horizontal tangent line and concave up. So what's going on at x equals 2? Is it a minimum or a maximum? I mean, if you draw the picture, you can't miss the problem. There's a relative minimum at x equals 2. Let's do the same thing at negative 1. So we already know that f prime at negative 1 is 0. So the first derivative is 0. There's a horizontal tangent line. It's a possible max or min. The second derivative gives us a negative number, negative 18, but negative is all we really need to know. So it's concave down. And we know that f prime of negative 1 equals 0. So I need a horizontal tangent line and concave down. Uh, the only way that works is if x equals negative 1 is a relative max. Questions on that? So there's there's two ways to do to find relative extrema. You can do the the intervals with f prime. That's the first derivative test, and you're just looking for changes. Or you can just straight test the second derivative, because then you know if you're bowled down or bowled up, if you're on the top of the mountain or if you're at the bottom of the valley. Uh, this also asks for points of inflection. So second derivative equals 0. x equals 1 half. I'm running out of room, but I think I'll be okay. So now I'm just going to test the intervals in the second derivative because the second derivative will tell me concavity. So f double prime of, let's just do 0 and 1. f double prime, okay, this gets more complicated. Not in terms of plugging things in, but just make sure you look back at the right equation. Because now I've got f, that tells me the y values. I've got f prime, that tells me slope, or increasing, decreasing. And I've got f double prime, which tells me concavity. So just make sure you're using the right thing in the right spot. If we're talking about points of inflection, that's a second derivative thing. So second derivative at 0 would be negative 6. So that would be concave down. If I plug in 1, I get 6. That's positive. So that's concave up. And since I only have two intervals, I'll just say it's concave down from negative infinity to 1 half and concave up from 1 half to infinity. And do it all on that one page.
back up and think big picture here. You, generally speaking, know what a cubic looks like. I don't know what this cubic looks like, but generally speaking, I know what a cubic looks like. It looks like it has one max and one min. Compare this to what we found. We found a max and a min. That makes sense. It looks like it has a concave down area and one, one interval of concave up. And that's what we found as well. So sometimes on the simpler, I'm just referring to x cubed as a simpler polynomial, but for some of these, you can kind of fit what you already know with the calculus. Obviously, if it gets much more complicated than that, you're just going to have to trust the calculus. Or grab a graphing calculator if it's if you have one and if it's allowed to just match up. You know, there's all this calculus I found match the picture that I see. All right, one more one more example. Let's find the relative extrema of f of x equals negative 3x to the fifth plus 5x cubed. All right, well, my knowledge of polynomials basically ends at x cubed, so I don't know what that thing looks like. We're just going to have to trust our calculus here. So relative extrema means I've got to find critical points first. That gives me the possible extrema. And then I can do first derivative test or second derivative test. This does not, um, this does not specify. So first derivative would be negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. That was kind of them to kind of make that work out for us. I'm going to factor out a negative 15, a negative 15 x squared, actually. That would leave x squared minus 1. So my critical points would be x equals 0 and x equals plus or minus 1. Um, so I could set up the intervals, but I think it might be easier to just take a second derivative and plug them in. That way I can just use 0 and positive and negative 1. I don't have to use, oh yeah, because if I set up intervals, I'm going to end up having to do 1 half and negative 1 half. And, eh. Let's do a second derivative. So negative 60x cubed plus 30x. Well, that doesn't look great, but I'm just plugging in for positives and negatives, so I'm not real worried about the big numbers there. So let's see here. At x equals negative 1, at x equals 0, and at x equals 1. I'll set up a kind of a table here. I already know that f prime is 0. So I've got a possible top, top of a hill, or bottom of a valley. Let's do a second derivative, because that will tell me concavity. That will let, let me know if I'm at the top of the hill or at the bottom of a valley. So f prime of negative 1 let's see, that would be negative 60 times negative 1 would be 60 plus negative 30 positive. So what do I know if f prime is 0 and f double prime is positive? What's going on there? Again, this isn't a memorized thing. This is just think about what that means. Somebody answer that. If the slope is 0 but we're concave up, what's going on? Is it a minimum or a maximum? Minimum. It's a minimum. And yeah, I could, some of you are like thinking in your head, like drawing the picture. That's fine. Like I'll see that during tests. You know, I see you working and I see people 
kind of doing this thing that they're, they're thinking, increasing, decreasing, or concave up, concave down. It's horizontal tangent line, but concave up, so it's got to be a relative minimum. At zero, f prime is, uh-oh, f prime is zero. That doesn't, I, eh, that doesn't help, that doesn't tell me anything. So I'm going to hold off on that one for now. At one, let's see, negative 60 plus 30. So the second derivative is negative. So if the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, what does that mean is happening? What, what kind of point is that? Let's see. Horizontal tangent line, concave down, got to be a relative max. At 0, I revert back to first derivative test. because second derivative test didn't tell me anything. And this is lovely. I, I would normally use 1 and negative 1, but those are also critical points. So I better pick negative 1 half and 1 half. f prime, I'm doing the first derivative test, so I better be using f prime now. Um, we're running short on time, so I'll just tell you that f prime is positive. So that means f is increasing. f prime of 1 half also turns out to be positive. So that means f is increasing. Okay, that's why this thing didn't really work there, because f equals 0, or x equals 0, is not a max or a min. I think what's happening at zero is it's changing concavity, but it was still increasing or decreasing. No, it was increasing the whole way. So it, it did one of those little numbers. So there's no max or min there. Well, actually, it was flat there, so I need to make it a little bit flatter. But it wasn't a max or min. All right, that's a lot of stuff. Page 192, 1 through 25, every other odd. 33 to 41, every other odd. This is another one of those days that it's kind of a two-day lesson, so we got all the notes in today. Tomorrow we'll answer some questions. So I don't expect you to have them all done by tomorrow, but please do a few of them. That way you'll know what to ask, and you'll have, you know, you'll know which ones are the tricky ones and which ones you need to, to get some help on. So give some of those a try. Tomorrow there won't be any new notes or any new homework assignment. So do some of them, but know that you're not going to get any additional stuff tomorrow.